Hi, I'm Dr. Devin O'Brien Kuhn. I'm a plastic and reconstructive surgeon and the medical director of the Johns Hopkins Center for Transgender Health. With me today, I have one of my patients, Johnny Boucher, who's going to talk with me about his experiences here at the center as a patient and generally his experience going through the process. It's an interesting story for um, you know how you made that decision to even get the surgery. I, I remember my my the moment that stands out to my heart it sounds sentimental, but the moment that really stands out to me in the first consult was when you said, let's rank these priorities. Because you had thought about right. what the possible priorities were. How, what were you thinking on your end about, uh, so you said, what, you know, rank sensation, um, sexual use, aesthetics, and standing to pee. Was it, were those the yeah. four? Yeah, I think there were two levels. The first one is, especially for bottom surgery, it's a process, it's a journey. It's mm -hmm. not you show up, you get it, you go home. That's what mm -hmm. top surgery is, mm -hmm. but that's not what this is. Mm -hmm. So you have to know, like, does a patient know that? Are they prepared for this? Are they gonna be mentally and financially and everything able to endure this journey? I, I really appreciated the education that is taking place here for the nursing staff. Because a lot of people, when they say, how was your outcome, what was your experience like, they're not really asking how healed you are, how are your scars, um, how uh, aesthetic is your outcome. They're asking, were you mistreated when you were in the hospital? Um, how much did you have to suffer through, not just physically, but psychologically? Did people uh, objectify you or sensationalize you? And I could tell that education is going on here. Um, I had uh, someone in the, the ICU say, pardon, um, would you happen to be a gender or a gender queer? And she said the words like, maybe it was the first time she'd ever said them out loud, but she had been studying because she wanted to affirm a wide variety of genders here and make me feel safe. You know, before we started doing surgery, we had you know, almost a year of education. Mm -hmm. We were trying to open up the general hospital some more. You know, part of the goal of the center is to be system-wide and even go out into the other Hopkins hospitals. And um, they're not all gonna do phalloplasties, mm -hmm. um, but they're all gonna have people come into the ER with a heart attack who might be trans. I'm so curious, how did you get into this? Because. This is a sensational subject. Um, and unless you have background with transgender folks, you're gonna be knee deep in all of our multifaceted community issues. I think the reason I got interested in it initially was because I liked the patients that we were, that we were you like treating. This? You, okay, that's, the, that's it. If I could really boil down why I like this place, you like us. Yeah, I think people, it's very like, Human beings can tell if you like them. Like, and it's not, it's not like you can't fake it. You know, there's a natural tendency to root for the underdog and, you know, want to help the people that you think aren't getting sort of a fair shake by the medical system. So I think that the education thing is really important because, um, you know, I would imagine that, you know, that's, that's the only way it's going to change in the future.